personal finance PowerPoint presentation, Revocable Trust versus Irrevocable Trust. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from Investopedia, Revocable Trust versus Irrevocable Trust. What's the difference? Which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Greg DeParcio, updated April 13, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been looking at estate planning, then focusing in on particular tools and parts of estate planning, which might be applicable depending on your personal situation. This time, that being the revocable trust and the irrevocable trust. A revocable trust and living trust are separate terms that describe the same thing, a trust in which the terms can be changed at any time. An irrevocable trust describes a trust that cannot be modified after it is created without the beneficiary's consent. So a trust in general, we might think about it as something similar to like a corporation and that it's kind of like its own separate legal entity that has characteristics that we, that we generally apply to an individual, such as the capacity to own property, and the trust might be able to live beyond the death of any one individual, which makes it something that could be useful for things like uh, estate planning. The line that we often have to walk depending on what we're trying to do with the trust is whether or not the person that's, that's using the trust has lost control, say, of the assets that they put into the trust or if they still have control over it because that can have some implications in terms of the estate planning. Remember, one of the estate planning goals that we might have might be to make it a little bit easier to go through probate. So if we think about the timeline of estate planning before we die, we want to we want to make it as easy as possible for our loved ones to be allocated to assets and try to allocate those assets in accordance with our wishes and possibly be lowering the estate taxes. But the will uh, has some issues with it that in that it might still have to go through probate, for example. So we might set up, say, a trust. That's one reason we might set up a trust to make it easier to go through uh, that process that might make the probate kind of process easier or bypass that process to some degree. We might also set up a trust that could help with estate planning between the, the married couple for a married couple's uh, situation. And we also have a situation for estate taxes where you have the, the uh, gift tax and the estate tax or, or the gifts and the estate taxes are kind of tied together because if they're going to tax someone when you die, then obviously what you would do then is give all your money away on your deathbed. And in order to stop that, then they have to have some rules on gifts that are tied to estates. So you can also imagine situations where people are trying to give away money to the extent that they can to avoid the estate taxes, but the trusts need to be set up in such a way that if they still control the trust, if they still control the money, you would think that the law would allow them to do that because they still have control of it even though it's in a trust. Whereas if they don't have control over the money, for example, then you would think you might have more capacity to uh, 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 alleviate the estate taxes or something like that. So those are just some ideas to keep in mind when you're thinking about trusts in general and walking this line between being able to revoke the trust and not being able to revoke the trust and why uh, that might be necessary in, say, estate planning. So a trust is a separate legal entity a person sets up to manage their assets. Trusts are set up during a person's lifetime to ensure that assets are used in a way that the person setting up the trust deems appropriate. Once assets are placed inside a trust, a third party, known as a trustee, manages them. So we can set, set the money into the trust, and then whoever can set up the, the trustee that's going to be managing or delegating that money. 
the trustee determines how the assets are invested and to whom they are distributed when the trust owner dies, though a trustee must manage the trust following the, the guidelines laid out when the trust was formed. So it is common for a wealthy person to use a trust instead of a will for estate planning and stipulating what happens to their wealth upon their death. So at the, when you're setting up before death, you're thinking about a will to try to make things as easy as possible uh, and at the point of death to be able to allocate the assets. The more, the larger your estate is and the more assets that you have, the more likely it might be useful then to set up tools such as a trust. So trusts are also a way to reduce tax burdens and avoid assets going to probate. So a uh, revocable trust and living trust. So the two basic types of trusts are a revocable trust, also known as a revocable living trust, or simply a living trust, and an irrevocable trust. The owner of a revocable trust may change its terms at any time. So they can remove beneficiaries, designate new ones, and modify stipulations on how assets within the trust are managed. So they have control. Uh, if it's revocable, you still have control to go in there and change uh, things to, to some degree, a large degree. Given the flexibility of revocable or living trusts in contrast with the rigid rigidity of an irrevocable trust, it seems all trusts should be revocable. So you might say, why would I do anything else? I want to have control over the, you know, the, the capacity to change things in the trust, right? But again, there could be other circumstances, such as tax circumstances, which lead people on estate planning to try to have more or less control within a trust. However, there are a few key disadvantages to revocable trust. Because the owner retains such a level of control over a revocable trust, the assets they put into it are not shielded from creditors the way they are in an irrevocable trust. So you might think of that as kind of a liability protection kind of component, which might be similar to like a corporate shield or something that you can kind of compare or be comparable to that. So if they are sued, the trust assets can be ordered liquidated to satisfy any judgment put forth. When the owner of a revocable trust dies, the assets held in trust are also subject to state and federal estate taxes. So again, another big component once again, when the owner of a revocable trust, the one that you can change, uh, the assets held in trust are also subject to state and federal estate taxes, the death tax, so when you die. If the beneficiaries of a revocable trust are young, not of legal age, and the minor's real estate assets are held within a trust, it can replace the need to appoint a guardian should the grantor die. So in that case, you're saying, okay, you're leaving, say, property to a child. The child is under age, so you might have some problems with them being able to own the property, which could then require you to have a guardian. Possibly the trust being set up properly could help in that situation. In addition, if a grantor names beneficiaries who they deem unreliable with money, the trust can set aside a specific amount to be distributed at reoccurring intervals or when they come of age if they are minors. So you can also set up the trust and say, I, I don't trust this individual with money, possibly because they are a minor or possibly because they're not that great managing money. So maybe you could set up the terms of the trust so that it pays them periodically rather than or it pays them the money when they hit a certain age, for example. So irrevocable trust. The terms of an irrevocable trust, in contrast, are set in stone the minute the agreement is signed. Except under exceedingly rare circumstances, no changes may be made to an irrevocable trust. That's the point. So now the person that has set up the irrevocable trust does not have the same kind of control that they have over the revocable trust. The main reason to select an irrevocable trust structure is taxes. So once again, you might say, well, if I'm alive, why, why would I set something up that's going to give me that much restriction over, say, the assets that I currently have control over? And one of the reasons could be the tax. Because remember, when you're talking about a death tax or an estate tax, you're talking about an accumulation of the assets at the point of death that are going to be taxed at that point in time, which is typically something of more concern for people that have fairly large estates, fairly large amounts of assets, then what that would incentivize the taxpayer to do is try to give all the money away on their deathbed, which of course the IRS would like 
So the IRS is going to try to commingle laws with how much money you can give away uh, to and commingle that with the estate tax. So one way you can quote give away end quote your money so it's not subject possibly to the estate tax is to try to give it to a trust. But uh, if you still have control over the trust, then the IRS, of course, would argue, well, you didn't really give it away because you still have control over the trust. So that's where this kind of walking back and forth line of irrevocable trust and revocable trust always comes into play with like estate planning, for example. So irrevocable trusts remove the benefactor's taxable estate, uh, estate assets, meaning they are not subject to estate tax upon death. They also relieve the benefactor of tax responsibility for any income generated by the assets. Irrevocable trust can be difficult to set up and require the help of a qualified trust attorney. So clearly if you're setting up an irrevocable trust, the nature of it being irrevocable and the nature of it being tied to estate planning means it's going to be something that typically will be done by more well-off individuals often subject to estate taxes and that you want to make sure you're putting sufficient time and effort in. So if you work in a profession where you may be at risk for lawsuits, such as a medical professional or lawyer, an irrevocable trust could help to protect your assets. When assets are transferred, whether they are cash or property, to the ownership of an irrevocable trust, it means the trust is protected from the creditors and even legal judgment. However, an irrevocable trust is a bit more complicated to set up than a revocable trust, uh, namely because it cannot be altered. So key differences. There are some key differences between a revocable and an irrevocable trust. Beyond that, a revocable trust can be altered, but an irrevocable trust cannot be changed. A grantor can also be the trustee with a revocable trust, but not so with an irrevocable trust. So privacy is protected when a revocable trust is set up. This means uh, when the grantor dies, the information in the trust is kept within the family. If you set up an irrevocable trust, documentation of the creation of the trust may be recorded if the estate goes through a probate court or another legal proceeding. Revocable trust versus irrevocable trust example. Let us say an individual creates a revocable trust to benefit their family and protect their assets. In doing so, as the grantor of the revocable trust, they can also name themselves the trustee, the person that's kind of managing the assets in the trust, and the beneficiary of the trust. When they get older, they can go back into the trust and name a new beneficiary and add a trustee to step in if they become incapacitated in their more senior years. The trust can be amended several times within the trustee's lifetime, say if the trustee remarries or after the birth of a grandchild. When they pass, their trust is kept out of probate and the stipulations in their trust can be carried out discreetly. So that's one of the benefits of this. You got the trust set up, they're managing the trust uh, when they're capable of doing, possibly allowing someone else to manage in the elder years if necessary. And then at the point of death, off of the trust because it's a separate legal entity, unlike a will, might make it easier to, to bypass some of the probate problems as well, which can be costly and costly kind of situation, the court kind of situation at that point, which is usually there to verify the wills and the name the, the person that's going to be allocating the executor at that point. So the disadvantages, however, uh, are it can be costly to write one up and even more expensive if you make alterations numerous times. So clearly, this is something that generally will require, require a lawyer, whereas just making a will is something that generally is going to be a less costly kind of thing to set up. A trust must be funded and assets must be moved into the trust, which can also be costly. So now let's say the same individual creates an irrevocable trust to benefit their family and protect their assets. Instead of naming themselves the trustee and beneficiary, the grantor must designate a separate trustee and feel secure giving up ownership and controlling assets such as property. So now you're setting up the irrevocable trust possibly to help you out with the estate planning, but you don't have the control over it. That's the point. That's why you might get relief on the estate planning, which is of course a risky thing to do. Most people, you know, well off people, wealthy individuals, people people that earned a lot of money and are confident in their decision-making capacities don't like giving up the control of the money and that's where the tightrope 
is walked between estate planning and on these trusts and setting up the trust. So they will now have, a, I have to carefully vet a trustee and a trust protector who acts as an oversight manager of the trust. Then they must name beneficiaries. Once assets have been put into an irre irrevocable trust, unlike a revocable trust, the grounder now must let it rest as they cannot alter the trust. Under certain circumstances, the inability to change the trust makes it makes an irrevocable trust potentially a risky endeavor. It is difficult to change the named beneficiaries in an irrevocable trust, and the grantor may not be able to access these assets even if a life event makes it necessary. So should I place my home in uh, an irrevocable trust? If you place your home in an irrevocable trust, you will keep it away from creditors and estate taxes due to the legal setup of the trust. However, unless you are worth millions, it might not be worth the cost and effort, effort as estate taxes are levied on $12.6 million in 2022. So once again, this is something that hits for wealthy individuals. Oftentimes, most individuals, their home is the, the, the thing that is going to be a, a, a substantial part of their assets. And the home value could be quite different depending on where you live. So a fairly modest home could be worth quite, quite a lot uh, in like California or New York versus the average in other areas. But still at this point in time, 12.6 million is a hefty, a hefty part uh, of your estate before you hit uh, the estate taxes. But note it was like five, like five million or something not too long ago. And uh, obviously it could change just depending on political circumstances. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you place your home in an irrevocable trust, it can be very hard to dissolve the trust if you want to sell the house or if you decide to change the beneficiary of your home. So what are the main parties involved in an irrevocable uh, trust? We have, there are typically four parties involved in an irrevocable trust. You've got the grantor, the trustee of the trust, and the beneficiary or beneficiaries. Some individuals may choose a trust protector uh, who oversees the trustees. What are the main downsides of revocable and irrevocable trusts? Both revocable and irrevocable trusts can be expensive to draw up, complex to undo in the case of an irrevocable trust, and costly to rewrite in the case of a revocable trust. It's very difficult to dissolve an irrevocable trust, and a revocable trust doesn't necessarily protect your assets from creditors. 